<clears throat> That's what I believe. It, we, we learned, if you remember, why don't you sell the shofar in the last, in this mimer? Why don't we sell the shofar when Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbat? You remember we learned it in this mimer? We'll get to it again in a moment. Because one of the things of the shofar, the terua, and also the shmurim, here he says the terua, is to destroy bad. And on Shabbat, there is no such thing. Shabbat, we don't have to destroy the bad. We don't have to do borer. We don't have to do uh, <clears throat> any of the malachas. And Shabbat borer is forbidden. So that's what's happening now. It's borer. All the bad is coming out. And hopefully it'll be Yom Shekul the Shabbos, that all the bad will be gone. And then that's already half the step <clears> to <throat> revealing good. So let's go. <clears throat> All right, so what do we say? Let's say again. We sound the shofar on Rosh Hashanah because that's the building of Malchut. The, the moon <clears throat> is empty. <clears throat> we have to build it up. That's Malchut. <clears throat> God's creative power. <clears throat> says the Rebbe, there's also another explanation of the Baal Shem Tov that says that you have to see every moment being brand new. And it has to be strong, like tikku. It needs to be strong. Every moment should be brand new. Especially every moment that you're serving God. It should always be brand new. Until it becomes your nature. You see that nature itself is a big miracle. That's the second paragraph. Third paragraph. Rosh Hashanah is a specific time. Because time is also a creation. And that's one of the messages of Rosh Hashanah is to see the godliness, the miracle, <clears throat> the purpose in every second, every instant of time. <clears throat> that's why Rosh Hashanah has to be on a special day, a special time. <clears throat> and it all depends on man. which is stressed by the fact that Rosh Hashanah is not made on Kof Hei Elo, that's today. Rather, Rosh Hashanah is made on, wait, it's Kof Hei, right? Is it? One second, one second. Yeah, that's right, today, Kof Hei. Rosh Hashanah is not made on Kof Hei Elo, which is the first day when God created the world, and at that second, the first instant, when really he created everything. But everything was waiting for man to make that decision and choose to serve God in place and in time. Adam Arishon caused completion in the whole creation by means of serving God in the creation. That's a new a novelty. What does it mean serving God? That he had an option. He could have done what he wanted to and he decided to serve God. We see that afterwards it didn't work. I mean, he served God, I don't know, for an hour or two. And then afterwards, he ate from the tree. That is was Adam. That's why it's called Adam, because it's similar to Adama. He is similar to God. So God put a part of himself in the world. Okay. <clears throat> Just like it was the first time that the first man caused completion in the whole world. Similarly, it also is every year. Every year, by means of the service of every single Jew. Jews are also called Adam. Why? Because Adam Elyon. Every single Jew is the first man. <coughs> you can't say the rabbi will do it for me or the religious person will do it for me. <coughs> every person is the first man. <coughs> By means of his service, he draws down godliness below. Therefore, Adam was created alone. Why was he created alone? To let us know that each and every one of us is a whole entire world. Namely, that that which man was created alone, Adamali Yahiru, he was similar to the one of the. This is because every single Jew 
is special. Every single Jew is the first man. That's the nature of the Jews. And there's a Jew who has in, in, in his soul a need to serve God. A Jew has in his soul a need to serve God, just like a normal person, normal human being, wants to stay alive. It's a natural tendency that people want to stay alive. <clears throat> they can overcome this, they can change it, etc. For a cause, a person can give his life. <clears throat> But a normal person wants to be stay alive. The same thing a normal Jew wants to be connected to the source of life. And that's Hashem. And how do you connect it to, to the source of life, Hashem? By doing what Hashem wants in this world. It's known that the ultimate purpose in the creation of the world because God wanted a dwelling in this world. Namely, there should be revealed godliness below in this world. Dira should be in terms of this world. Because what does it mean God wants a dwelling in this world? It means he wants a world. He wants a world. There should be a world. There should be happiness. There should be music, food. And variation, different types of people, different races, different personalities, but everyone should connect to the creator. The creator, he's the one that makes all these variations and differentiations, and everyone's personalities are different. <clears throat> but that's what it means to reveal God in the world. But Gidria is a man of Makom, in the place you make a dwelling for God. And for this reason, drawing the kingship of God in Rosh Hashanah has to be in time. And it has to be by means of the Jews. I mean, maybe you've asked yourself, isn't it interesting here? The Jews have been celebrating Rosh Hashanah as a people for, you know, 3,300 years, Rosh Hashanah. And that's the day God created the world. Why didn't it catch on? You know, these other, these, these other religions that claim that they are the, now they're the chosen people. You know, God chose them, now they're the chosen religion. <clears throat> no, okay, you want to be chosen religion, but at least <clears throat> celebrate the day the world was created. That's for you. You're part of the world. Now, only the Jews celebrate Rosh Hashanah. That's what it says. It's Avaya, Martha, Yom. That's what it says. We in purchase the double. God made a covenant with you today. A strange word, Amarta. It's Hashem Amarta Yom. God made a covenant with you, or He praised you. There's three different meanings. Mabar Bazad, Samach Tzedek explains, and also his son, the Rabbi Marash, explains the Chachila Reber, that his whole thing of the Rabbi Marash was the Chachila Reber. The Chachila Reber, the Rabbi Marash had the saying that the other people say you have to meet with the world. I say you have to jump over the world. Jump over problems. Treat them as though they're not there. That this word amarta, amarta yom, there's three meanings, but the main meaning is, the first one, the main one is praise and pleasure. God is saying, I praise you and I get pleasure from the Jews. Hayom is talking about Rosh Hashanah. Namely, the Hamarta Yom, this refers to the making God pleasure on Rosh Hashanah. Hayom is always pleasure. So there's a, here we have a sentence in the Bible. Let's see, where is it? Parshish Kitabo. You can look it up. Uh, chapter 26, sentence 17. God is saying that I praise you. I get pleasure from you. Today, what's today? Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, God says, I get pleasure from you. On this specific day, like it's explained in another place, that this is also what the chauffeur of Rosh Hashanah is pleasure. 
shofar comes from the lesson of shapru masechem. Like I told you before, shufra the shufra. Pleasure, beauty, beauty. Mizem moving from this, it's understood that the main root work of Rosh Hashanah is the hashli matainu to complete the pleasure and the desire of Hashem. And what does God want? What does God want? He doesn't want that we should go to heaven. He doesn't want that we should die for him. You know, sometimes, maybe, it could be. Hashem wants that we should live for him. We should make a dir of a taktoni. We should make a dwelling place for God in this physical world. <clears throat> in other words, show the whole world that this world is God's creation. God creates everything. The more people, the better. The more variation, the more diversity, the better. But people just, one thing, everybody has to be the same. They all have to worship only the Creator. As soon as they start worshiping creations, people, angels, powers, ghosts, levels, awareness, consciousness, people devote themselves to this as that <clears throat> does away with the diversity, the uniqueness and the potential which is in every single human being. People have to be devoted to the creator. The creator has given us tremendous potential. To make a dwelling for Hashem in the world. This is made by the service of the Jewish people. <clears throat> That's what it means, ha Marta. Hamarta means God says, I get pleasure from you. So on this day, amazing. God says, on this day, Rosh Hashanah, I get pleasure from you. Sound the shofar, make me a king, and then you'll, you'll be much more meaning and blessing in every detail of the world. And I just want to make a two minute break, three minute break. Good. <clears throat> okay, so here we are. What have we learned? We've learned on Rosh Hashanah we are building the kingship of God. <clears throat> kingship of God means the revelation of the creator and the creation. Revelation of good, revelation of life. <clears throat> the Baal Shem Tov said, we have to look at every instant like it's brand new. <clears throat> we have to do it powerfully, tiku, powerfully, the chodesh, that the world is being brand new all the time. <clears throat> said the Rebbe, that's why it depends on a certain time, because we also have to sanctify time. Time is just the creation. <clears throat> and man was created on a certain day in order to put meaning into time as well. And every single person is man. Every single person is that first man. Now we're going back again to this idea of time and we're Stressing the idea of a dear of a tachtoni, that God wants to be in this physical <clears throat> world. He gets pleasure from us. In Marta, he gets pleasure from us. He chooses us. The Jewish people are special. That's the whole idea of the binyan of Malchus. This is where we're up to now. <clears throat> Like we explained in the writings of the Arizal, it's made by means of this Tamlichuni Alechi. When we say the sentences of Musa in the Musa prayer, <clears throat> and we make God a king, the 10 sentences that prove that God is a king, 10 sentences that prove that God listens to the chauffeur, 10 sentences that prove that God remembers. When we 
say these sentences, it makes a big change in the upper worlds. <clears throat> Translate the, the Maksa. Translate it. Especially when we say these sentences about making God a king, and God listening to the shofar, this makes God a king. <clears throat> this removes all the concealments and things that hide us from seeing that we are big miracles, that God is creating us, he's creating the world, and he's creating it from love. Why don't we see this? Because the world covers it over when we sound the shofar, or when we say these sentences that removes the concealment. Turek with hasarat, it removes the concealment. The yesh lo'er, we can explain. Hem yanim, the continuation, in other words, the flow of things. It goes like this. The cave and since the Rosh Hashanah, Hamal Chut Mechaseid, God conceals himself, hides himself. <clears throat> what did I say? I gave an example yesterday. <clears throat> it's like a couple that every year they dissolve the marriage right, on condition and they make a shidu, a new shidu. They start over from the beginning. Right, that's what God does. Heir of Rosh Hashanah, he dissolves his connection with the Jews and with the world temporarily. He puts things on hold. And now he's making a new shidduch. Rosh Hashanah, we're making the shidduch. And we have to convince God, you have to dress up nice, you have to act nice, you have to be sincere, and say, listen, Hashem, I want to, in this case, we're the bride. I want to uh, continue another year, at least. It says, so that's what it means, it's covered over. Before <clears throat> Rosh Hashanah, the marriage between Hashem and the Jews and Hashem and the world is covered. It says in the in, in, in the in the, the Chumash that before God made woman, so he threw a tardemite, he put a deep sleep on man. He says that's the whole secret of the Rosh Hashanah, the Sira it's called. God removes himself, so to speak, from the world in this sort of superficial way on uh, Rosh Hashanah, Arab Rosh Hashanah. In the Tanya also it talks about it, right? God renews the world from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. <clears throat> so the, 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 he, said, he asked the question, what do you mean? God renewed, the eyes of God are on Israel from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. Say so always, constantly. In, th in fact, it says in a sentence, constantly. What does that say for the beginning of the end, to the end of the year? From the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah, to the end of that, that year, then God, so to speak, he removes himself a little bit. He reconsiders. Hari Aboda, therefore, we have to now make the service of God. We want you to be the king over us. We want to renew the marriage. This is by means of bitol. First of all, there has to be bitol, the kisui, the helam has to. First of all, there has to be the bitol, right? A girl goes out to, 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 for a shidu, so she doesn't dress however she wants to and says whatever she wants to. At least she has to make a good impression once. Right, for husband, after she gets married, she does what she wants. But before that, <clears throat> she has to make a nice impression. She has to make it that, you know, she's going to be a good wife and she's going to be, you know, a partner to her husband and make all these things. So that's what we have to do, Rosh Hashanah. Unlike the marriage, we have to do it the whole year to the year. <clears throat> but at least we start on Rosh Hashanah. Kisav El Ambassador, Zeh, Kolel, we have to, Rosh Hashanah. And we're subservient to Hashem. Of course, the big difference is Hashem is creating us. In a, in a merit, it could be in a, a wedding, the, maybe the, uh, the, 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 the groom, he thinks he's God, but the, he finds out quickly that he's not. Here, God is really God. <clears throat> he's really Hashem. And we're really, you know, the whole rest of the year, we sort of think we're the boss. In Rosh Hashanah, we realize, hey, the, the, the whole thing depends on I have to act nice. I have to sound the shofar. I have to, to pray properly. <clears throat> Era of Rosh Hashanah, God's presence is, so to speak, concealed. So we have to... <clears throat> we have to do away with this concealment of God. 
<clears throat> right? Do away with the concealment of God. Catch God's attention, so to speak. How do we do that? By means of getting rid of all the bad things that confuse, <clears throat> including negating all of your confusions of your body. <clears throat> What's the Rebbe saying? He's giving a blessing that everyone should be healthy. That there should be a tzitzit. How did the Rebbe know that I wasn't I wasn't healthy? Here we go. Look at this. The <clears throat> Adarab, exactly the opposite. open the It should be even doubled strong. You have all these old people that they they think that they're sick and that they're this says the Rebbe. Here's a big blessing. Rosh Hashanah, you're going to be twice as strong as you ever were. Pina, after this, after you remove all the negative things, which that's the union of refining yourself. You learn Hasidic. That's why we we say Tehillim. Tzarech Liot, there has to be the service of Ratzon. After we turn away from the bad things, that's really nice, but now you have to do good, right? You have to do good. The lady goes on in a shiruch, and she makes a nice the, the, the makeup, and gets dressed up right, and her hair, and her this, and she says, okay, now you got to open your mouth. You got to do so. You got to say something. You have to say something. Say, do something positive. You got rid of all the bad things. Right? Got rid of all the bad things. Now let's see something positive. Sha'al Yudezeb, I mean, this and I said, Tokepa or Harbe Yoter, Miyam Shacha Sha'al Yudezeb, Hakli. Right? Here we're talking about we're going on a shidduch with God. You know, so we dress up nice and we act nice and we get rid of the bad thoughts and we say to heal him and this. But, uh, you know, okay, now we have to do something positive. It's very nice, you know, it makes a good impression on Hashem that we've done all these things for Him and we look nice and we're, you know, you know how to smile. And it's good. We learn Hasidus, but now we've got to get to work. What's the work? We have to be positive. We have to say positive blessings. We have to sound the show for positive. We have to give ourselves totally over to the Creator. The Yesh Lomo, we can say, that's what it means, accepting God's kingship. Or in simple language, being responsible. Accepting responsibility. Hashem, I am a Jew. I am in the world. I'm here. I'm responsible to you. Kabbalat Malchuto. Whatever you say, I'll do. The Pashtus. That this is God's will. A big problem some people have, you know, there's some people who are really good, you know, they know how to make choices in their life, but a lot of people don't know how to make proper choices in their life. And nevertheless, they like to make, everybody likes to be, to be the, how do you say, the captain of their own ship, you know, and so sometimes people make the wrong choices. And sometimes people make the wrong choices and they succeed. They don't even know that they're making the wrong choice. They succeed greatly. It could be they work on Shabbos and they don't eat kosher foods and they don't do anything kosher, but they succeed in life because someone convinced them that success is the name of life. Says the Rebbe, the main success is <clears throat> serving Hashem. That was that was the big. Uh, well, I'll tell you a story afterwards. It just uh, this will be the story I'll tell you. <laughs> It says that we have to accept God's kingship on us willfully. By means of our serving Hashem with total, how do you say, devotion and getting rid of all the halamus mustarim, getting rid of all selfishness, false egotism. Avoda the malchusa bratzon kabuleim that we accepted God's kingship willfully. By means of this, it makes binyan of malchus. Ba'ad until a shleimus shebezeh, until it's complete, yichur avaya velokim, yichur or v'shefa, that becomes uni unified. God and his creation, God's light and the flow of life that comes into the world. Until all of the concealments Shem Elokim itself starts to shine. 
suddenly you see every single person is unique, every person, person is a blessing. Right? That's why it's such a, a terrible, evil thing, these people who encourage abortion. Such a terrible thing. True, there's children that are not wanted and the women the women haven't got the ability to, to bring them up and they didn't unwanted the children. So okay, so there has to be orphanages or the women have to be educated properly. Don't worry, there's a way around it, but the way not is not to kill people. <laughs> right? A woman calls up the you know child care center, my son is making noise, what should I do? Kill them. Have any more problems? I'm available 24-7. Right? My son doesn't want to eat. What should I do? Kill him? <laughs> what type of thing is that? What? He's making noise. He, he dirties his diaper. I have to change his diapers twice, three times a day. What am I supposed to do? Kill him? That's why Malchus was created in what's called ten spirot. Namely, that every single detail of this world is important. Is it's a blessing. The more details, the better. That's what it means building Malchut into a partsuf. Partsuf means ten spirot, but it means <clears throat> every ten spirot, every sphere has ten spirot inside of it, and every one of those ten has ten, and everyone that's where diversity comes from. And that's the idea of Rosh Hashanah, the world. We are partners with Hashem in perfecting the world. Rosh Hashanah. Listen, uh, uh, Napoleon, you know, like I told you the story, the Alter Rebbe sounded the chauffeur and he defeated Napoleon. Now, the full, the, Napoleon, he was like the ideal super duper leftist. He was the ideal, he would have been the darling of today's leftist world. Everybody, freedom, right? Liberty, fraternity, equality. Everyone was equal. Everybody does what you want. Right? In America, they have the same disease. It's called pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness. And what does it mean? Everybody does whatever they want to. And there was diversity. We see that there's no diversity. We see exactly the opposite. Right? Everybody does what they want. It ends up that everybody is almost exactly the same. They have the same problems, they have the same this. A little differences, you know, his nose is different, he likes a different type of food. <clears> the <throat> Maila, Bebechina's partsu of Malchus, that this is, I think one of the big differences is we see that the Arabs, before Islam became uh, radical, the Arabs were very, very productive, intelligent, a artistic people and they accepted the Jews, they accepted others as soon as it became radicalized then all of a sudden what came out of the Arab nations the last, I don't know, thousand years what came out of it, right? What, what came out of it? Oil, you know, any sort of new invention that improved the world now, now don't think in any way that the Arabs are stupid people they certainly are not they certainly are not stupid people, exactly the opposite they have their geniuses just like everybody else does. You know, what happened? As soon as it became radicalized, that's it. Right? As soon as it became radicalized, that's it. As soon as people <clears throat> were, did not believe in the Creator according to the Torah, right? The Creator, according to the Torah, says that every detail is holy. But it has to be according to the Torah. So that's what it says, it's built in the way of a partsuf, that everyone is different and everything is different. This is the whole idea of partsuf, of malchus, on the point of malchut. The point of malchut is the ability of God to create. <clears throat> but the partsuf means that it's revealed light. God is revealed in every single detail of the creation. Kamovur, behem shekshon, like it's explained over there in long Lake. Okay, so I'll tell you the story. <clears throat> uh, one second. Oh, I'm on the show. Shofar. <clears throat> 